finish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He hath, he hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. Now, before you go crazy and say, what you're saying is you've got to be perfect. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, when I read that passage of Scripture, I thought to myself, wait a minute. God didn't look on outward appearance. He looks on the heart. And then I thought, I obviously am misunderstanding the, the context of 1 Samuel 16. And I go back and I look at it, and I was misunderstanding the context of 1 Samuel 16. Because... David had a lot of really good characteristics, but all of those characteristics aren't named in Acts 13. The thing that's named in Acts 13 is this. Let me read it again. In Acts 13, the thing that was named is this. He says, And when he had removed him, talking about Saul, he raised up unto them David their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. David loved him. David needed him. David followed him. David trusted him. David wanted him. David served him. David obeyed him. David surrendered him. And even when David sinned, he still humbled himself before God in Psalms 51 and comes back. And in verse 9 and 10, it says, David, David is allowed to pin down, hide thy face from my sin. And blot out all my iniquities, O oh, oh God, and create a clean spirit within me. He humbled himself. He had a desire to be pure before Almighty God. Now, all of those physical appearances is what made me end up here. But the question is this. We usually use that passage of Scripture, and today the world is saying, and, and, and it's coming into the church. It doesn't matter about the outside. Listen to me. I started to bring a sponge this morning because if I had four if I had four cups of liquid right here and I had diesel in this one and I put a sponge in it and I held it up and I said, can you see what's in this? You would say no until I squeezed it and what's in it is going to come out. Or if I had some water here and I, I soaked it and I let it run until it quit dripping and I held it up and I said, okay, which one of these four is in this sponge? You can't see it. Until it's squeezed. And what's on the inside is going to come out. Are you picking up on the land down? Amen. What's on the inside is going to come out. And here's what's happening. We're saying you can do whatever you want to to the outside. But what God's word saying is. If you're a man after my heart. You don't have to. You can be a dwarf. You can have a flat nose. You can have big ears like mine. You can be bald headed like me. Whatever in the world you are, but if you've got a heart for the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in Him, you can be born again. Amen. But what's on the inside is going to work its way to the outside. If the love of God's on the inside, it's going to work its way to the outside. If the love of God's on the inside, it's going to come out my mouth. If the love of God's on the inside, it's going to block my ears from hearing stuff I shouldn't hear. It's going to block my eyes from seeing stuff I shouldn't see. It's going to block my feet from going places I shouldn't go. Amen. It's going to block my hands from doing things I shouldn't do. Amen. Why? Because the love of God on the inside is going to constrain me, and I'm not going to do those things which are convenient to me that my flesh wants to do, but I'm going to be found doing what God wants me to do. Amen. And the world... And everything in the world is working its way into the church. And I'm just telling you, church, this big, fat, bald-headed pastor is going to preach again it. And I'm telling you, the trash that's in this world, that the people are saying, don't judge me. I'm telling you, I don't have to judge you. The Word of God's already done it. Amen. It already says it. Amen. I don't have to tell you you shouldn't be shacking up. The Bible teaches you you shouldn't be shacking up. I don't have to tell you you ought not be tatting your body up. The Bible tells you y'all not be. I don't have to tell you not to poke holes in yourself. The Bible's already said it. And this fat, bald-headed preacher is going to preach on it. Amen. And it ain't because I don't love you. It's because I love the Lord more than I love the praise of men. Amen. And I promise you, I will not join and I will not win a popularity contest. If you're stripping off, that's called immodesty. And immodesty is, again, God's Word. It ain't against Brother Aaron's opinion. It ain't against the Baptist opinion. Drinking is horrid. 
And it ain't nothing but the devil's spit cup. And if you find yourself out there in the middle of that bunch of trash, it only takes one to turn into six. And there ain't no alcoholic ever started drinking 36 a day. It started with one sip and turned into one. And I'm telling you, church, if whatever is on the inside works its way out, the person you used to be ain't the person you are no more. Amen. The greatest testimonies I've ever heard is when I've been around somebody and they would tell me who they used to be and I would say, man, I would never believe that. And they literally, with tears in their eyes, have come up and hugged me and said, that's the greatest compliment anybody could ever give me. And I'm like, why? And they said, because that just shows me that I'm not the person I used to be. Amen. I'm different. I've changed. If you did something before you got saved, you can't change that. you got to live with it. Listen, if there's an alcoholic had a wreck, before you know it, he got his leg severed. Two years later, he hears the gospel and gets saved. He ain't going to grow a new leg. He's going to go around the rest of his life on crutches. But he's got a testimony of the man he used to be. I ain't that man no more. Amen. And God saved my soul. Amen. And he, he, he doesn't look down on me because I got one leg. He gave his only begotten son to die for me because of it. Yeah. It bothers me, church, when we try to take the trash of the world and bring it into God's house. Amen. Listen, we might disagree on what genre of music in gospel is right. But you cannot disagree with secular and Christian. Right. Well, amen. Yeah. amen, brother man. That's good preaching, son. <laughs> amen. I'll amen myself if I have to. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is no argument. And if what's on the inside works its way to the outside, we ought to be the most done. We ought to be like, you already ever heard the old saying, I'm like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> That's the way we ought to feel in the world. It ought to be sickening to us. It ought to bother us. But in this day and time, here's what's happening. The world's saying, does it matter about the outside? God looks on the heart. He knows my heart. You know what? Here, here's what I'll pin down. I have to pin it down. God looks on my heart. He knows my heart. He sure does. And if worldliness is coming out, worldliness is inside. Amen. 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 Look up what the Lord seen in David's heart. We've got all these outside characteristics. Oh, he had a beautiful complexion. Man, he was strapping. Boy, he was a brawling and brave young man to kill that bear and that lion. Oh, all these things. And God said, yeah, all that's good. But there's one thing about him that I like. And I've looked down deep in his heart. And you know what I know? He loves me. Here's what happens if we love the Lord and I'll be done. For the third time, if we love Him, God knows we will. If our heart's in the right place, we're going to love Him. We're going to need Him. We're going to follow Him. We're going to trust Him. We're going to want Him. We're going to serve Him. We're going to obey Him. We're going to surrender to Him. We're going to humble ourselves before Him. All of those things. And here's what I'm going to say, Lord. When you put approval on this thing I want to do, that ain't the way it works, church. What we've got to say is, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit, and let me love the things that you want me to love that are right for you. Amen. Lord, I want to be where you want me to be, doing what you want me to do, and loving who you want me to love, and that's you above none else. And my neighbor is myself. You better be careful. You better be careful saying, well, bless God, God knows my heart. Absolutely he does. He knows yours and he knows mine too. And I will promise you this. I will promise you this. Scripture says in 1 John 2, 15 and 16, he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 